Hi everyone, it's Nisha and Happy New Year! Welcome to my first video of 2024 and I thought in this video we should really talk about my 2023 favourites. So, I like most things that I use in my videos and I have lots of favourites but I thought I will just talk to you about the things that I used all the time, all year round. So things that I use almost on a daily basis. This is going to be a bit difficult to show you. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the rest duvet. Um, I am not going to be reviewing and talking in depth about all, all these products. What I will do is I will leave you links to the videos where I've talked or reviewed these products and also I have a lot of um, discount codes for a lot of those things so please check the description box afterwards. I reviewed this rest duvet, this has been sent to me. I haven't slept under anything else since. So just quickly, this is made from special fibers that keep you cool. It feels like silk, it's just the most beautiful thing ever. You don't put duvet cover on it because it won't be as efficient at, at cooling you down. So if you are a hot sleeper like I am or have hot flashes, this is going to save you. Even now in the winter, I sleep, I sleep under it. Paul likes it as well, but in the winter, he doesn't. He likes to be more... Mm, he likes to be warm and I don't so he has his own duvet I have this one so I've been using it honestly from the moment I received it I use it every day I even was wondering if in the winter that could be too cold but it is not it's not like you are lying on the block of ice constantly but it just has that lovely cooling effect when you first put it on you and yes, of course you warm up, your body warms up underneath it. It's not like you're sleeping outside in a freezing cold. Um, but whenever you move, you move your leg, you touch another area of this cooling duvet. It's very difficult to explain, but I absolutely love it. The next item won't be any surprise to you. It's the Zip Halo. This thing, this probably is like the most favorite thing that I've discovered this year. So this is a micro and nano current device for your face. I am not someone that sticks to using any devices, anti-aging devices, but for some reason I really love this. It's small, it's very light. What makes it more fun I, I think is the app that you sync with it and you can choose your different treatments and you do it with the founder of Zip, Zip Halo and I've seen really positive difference in my face. You have to remember like with any of these devices you know you can't stop aging but maybe you can help to slow it down or as you aging making your skin look as good as possible and that's what this does, but you have to use it frequently. You can't just use it for a week then don't use it for a month. We've talked about ATP, this helps with the production of ATP. Like I said, I won't go into detail. I will leave you in-depth review of this, so if you want to know more about it or you haven't heard about it, just watch that video. I also have, I think, discount code for, for this. And I know a lot of you bought it or already had it and you love it too. Now this I have used for maybe four years. This is the Skin Deva Vitamin C, E and Ferulic Acid. This is 20% Vitamin C. I use it every single morning. You can use it at night as well, but um, I don't like to use it up too quickly. This I can't live without it. I know there is lots of vitamin C, E and ferulic acid serums out there. I really love the Skin Deva. Like I said, I've used it for about four years. I can see real difference in brightness of my face, more even complexion, and I just cannot be without it. This is the first step 
every morning that I use before I put anything on. Now I think this year they've come out with their hydrating moisturizer with niacinamide and ceramides which will strengthen your skin barrier, will retain moisture and niacinamide also helps with uh, even evening out your skin. So this one I use usually in the evening. It is great under makeup but I use SPFs in the morning so I tend to use this one in the evenings when I use my acid serum so I use a lactic acid serum I alternate it with retinol because obviously you don't want to use acid and retinol or retinoid on the same night so when I use my lactic serum I just put that moisturizing cream over it now for SPFs, you know I mostly use um, a lot of beauty pie skincare. I am subscribed to the yearly membership, whatever it is. But I really, really love the SPFs. So I have here the Traceless Mineral SPF 30. And in the winter, I use the 51. They, I love them because they are mineral and they also perform really good under makeup. Sometimes, you know, the SPF can clash with your foundation and your foundation doesn't look that good. I've never had problem with this and any foundation that I put on the top of it. But something very similar, if you are not subscriber to Beauty Pie, is the Summer Fridays SPF. This is the Mineral Milk Sunscreen SPF 30. Very, very, they are very similar in texture, how they perform under makeup. I would say that this one is probably better for oily skin. I feel like this one is a bit less moisturizing than this one, but it might be just me. Now onto foundations. You know, foundations are like my number one makeup product. I could go without anything else but I have to have foundation and I've reviewed quite a few last year and still my number one favorite foundation is the Delilah Alibi foundation. This is a foundation that if I'm going somewhere and I know I want to look really good and I will always like the look of my face is this one. But I also discovered the Hourglass Ambient Light, the Ambient Light, Ambient Soft Glow Foundation, um, mine is in number 8, love this one, it's also beautiful. Then the Derma Blend Flawless Creator, this is gorgeous. I love most of these foundations, the reason I love them is that they are not thick, they don't look cakey, they have quite running consistency but high pigmentation therefore you get the coverage without putting loads and loads of product on and looking cakey so this one i also love and my latest one i think that i've reviewed is the although this is not a new foundation on the market i think it was reformulated is the ysl all hours foundation beautiful looks absolutely beautiful the only thing I've noticed, because when I first reviewed it, I loved it so much, I was wearing it every day. I would say that this one is a bit drying. It could be coincidence or it is that this is drying because I remember started having a very dry and like shriveled up almost, you know, the looser skin here just on the top of my uh, cheekbones. So I don't wear this every day. I wear it maybe once a week or, you know, the day that I fancy wearing it, but I'm not wearing it every day because I, I think there is, if I remember people saying that there is alcohol in it quite high up on the list. Don't quote me, I'm not sure, I can't remember now, but it's a beautiful foundation. But for me, if I use it every day, like for a week, I feel it's a bit drying. Okay, let's talk about concealers. Uh, in 2023, I've discovered the new Natasha Denona High Glam Concealers and I 
can say that since I've bought it, I use it every day. Sometimes I will dip in my other concealers, but I absolutely love this concealer. It gives great coverage. It doesn't look cakey. I don't feel like it emphasizes my lines. It doesn't settle in my lines, so I absolutely love it. I have two colors. I usually have two colors in foundations and concealers because you know when I need something lighter then in a spring I mix them and in the summer I need a dark one because I fake tan. So I have two colors. Um, I have YN9 and YN6. Now powders. I have lots of powders but I seem to be using these three the most. For under my eye I am obsessed with the Morphe Brightening Pink Bacon Set um, powder. I don't bake with it, I just slightly dip my brush in it, take off the excess and just do it just under my eyes. The pink colour makes it really brightening. I don't know if it's probably too bright, it doesn't come across as pink, but yes, it has a definitely pink hue. So I've been using this since I got it every day. Like I said, now and again I will use something different, but these products are the ones that I used the most last year. Now, you know I set my foundation usually with mineral powder foundation and the Lily Lolo has been my favorite for a very long time. Um, I have like three different colors. Cookie is the one that I use the most. But if I don't want to set it with this, another beautiful, beautiful setting powder is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Translucent Loose Powder. This is obviously not very expensive, but it's a beautiful, beautiful powder and a huge, huge amount that you get in here. I would say that I prefer this powder to the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. So this is definitely worth giving a try. Now bronzers. I have one really inexpensive and one sort of middle of the road. So in the summer I love the Sigma Mud Bronzer in medium. This is my new one because um, in the summer I've used it so much and then I dropped it and it cracked. So I had to get a new one. And for like all year round really, I love the Sun Lava Glow Bronzing Powder from Catrice and this one is in 010 Sun Kissed Bronze. These are, I think I get them usually on Amazon, it's one of those marbled ones and it has slight sheen to it so it's not matte but it's not like a glittery one. Absolutely love it, I've got it on today. And now for blush, I don't even know if I should show you this. I feel blush is something that you don't need to spend lots of money on. We do because they come in beautiful packaging or we like the particular color. And I have lots of favorite um, blushes. I like blushes that have some sort of luminosity to it, not matte blushes. Uh, because I don't use so much separate highlighter. But this blush I use every single day and I've looked everywhere on internet, try to find it because it's from BH Cosmetics. This company I don't think is being bought by someone, so I don't, I don't know if they still make their stuff. Uh, this is the floral blush, it's a duo cheek color in Honolulu Hideaway. So it's got like two shades of beautiful pink and it's got that sheen to it. I'm wearing it today. I love this blush and you don't need so much. I haven't made, made a big dent in it yet but when it's finished I would be really sad because I can't find it anywhere anymore. Maybe in the US you can still find it somewhere but here in the UK I can't find it and it's very inexpensive. And I use it every single day. Yes, I use other blushes, but when I'm not thinking about it, I just reach for this every time. What do I do next? Um, brows. 
My favourite brow pencil is... I use quite a few. Again, I don't think you need to spend a lot of money on a brow pencil. For me, it's... One, you have to find a good colour. Two, is the consistency of it. It's not too slippery, it's not too dry. So, it can be quite personal preference when it comes to pencils, just like with mascaras. But I reach mostly for the Delilah eyebrow pencil and mine is in ash. They only do two colours. That's the only thing with Delilah, you know, with the foundation they don't have very big range of, um, of colours unfortunately. And with the brows they only have two colours. There is ash and I can't remember what the other one is, but I have ash on. And then, so I just use the pencil and then I set my brows with the Benefit 24 hour setting gel. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I've tried loads of other ones. I've tried these soaps and clear gels. And yes, they might brush your brows through, but this almost glues them. So I've never find, found anything that I like as much. I found things that were similar, but I still stick with this one. The mascaras won't be a surprise <laughs> to you either. I've tried lots of mascaras and I liked some, but I seem to be using every day these two. I always use two mascaras. I use first one almost as lengthening, one to brush through my every lash, and then the next one is more of a thickening, bodybuilding mascara. So as my first one, as my first mascara, I always use the Catrice Glam and Doll Sculpt and Volume. I have to remember because they do so many different mascaras. This one is my favorite. And then I usually top it off with the Anastasia Lash Brag. I buy the little ones for some reasons. For some reason, I think I prefer the, li the, the little mascara. I feel that Obviously you get more product in the big one, so you keep it for longer and it dries out quicker. That's my theory. So I like using the smaller one. Okay, eyeshadow palette. <laughs> for me it's almost impossible to choose a favorite eyeshadow palette. Every palette that I have, I love. But I will show you the ones that I've used the most, oops, the most. So I think the most I've used the Charlotte Tilbury Quads, the Pillow Talk Dreams and the original Pillow Talk. I think I've shown you a makeup look with the original one. It's very delicate. It's a great everyday summer look for me. You know, I like the warmer looks in the summer and this one for everyday quick beautiful, delicate. So that's the original pill pillow talk. If I want my makeup a bit stronger, I actually even wore that on Christmas day as my makeup is the pillow talk stream. They are easy because you just have four eyeshadows. You don't have to sit there and think of, of any intricate looks. You just know you're going to get quick, gorgeous look. Now you all know I love Natasha Denona palettes and my favorites are these three. The Retro, which is more of a pinky burgundy palette. So that's my Kula palette, I love those. Then I need a nude palette. So if you, I've got Glam palette also, but I find myself reaching for this one more because this one can give me this cool look like the Glam palette but also have option of warming up slightly this look with these few warmer eyeshadows. And then my Dream palette. This one I would say is a bit like retro uh, but darker so if you prefer more delicate looks go for retro but if you like your look to be a bit stronger then my dream palette is for you 
and also Sigma. So Sigma is your more affordable option. Um, I think I also have have discount for Sigma. Sigma has so many eyeshadow palettes, big ones, quads, nine eyeshadow palettes. I will actually leave you a video. I, um, I have a playlist of just Sigma eyeshadows looks that I've done with every palette that I have. So you can choose that way because it's very difficult to choose. One thing to know that I've never come across Sigma palette that wasn't good quality that I didn't like putting on or working with. So you just need to choose the colors that you like. But when it comes to quality, beautiful. So today what I've got on is the new mod palette. So again, this is more of your pinky burgundy. This is more, more on a cooler side. These brands are um, on a cooler side. Beautiful palette and that's what I have on my eyes today. And now in the summer, if I use my Sigma palette, I love the ambient, Ambience palette because this one is warm. So you get all these warm brands. But honestly, if you want greens, if you want purples, if you want pinks, you want gold, there is color combination in Sigma for everybody. But you don't have to worry about the quality of them. When it comes to lipsticks, uh, my everyday lipstick I would say is Charlotte Tilbury Dance Floor Princess. Love that one. Natasha Denona lipstick in Natasha. Uh, Delilah in Whisper, that's what I've got on today. I have it with NYX Los Angeles lip liner. And for my bright colors, I've discovered Lisa Eldridge's lipsticks, which are beautiful. Again, I think I've done a video trying them all on, so I will leave you that video as well in the description box. And I love the bright lipsticks from Charlotte Tilbury as well. And makeup brushes, you know, I love, love Rifa brushes. The reason I like them is because I like natural bristle brushes and that's what they are. They are made in Japan, you can't get better than that, but they are very reasonable when it comes to price. You know, Japanese brushes, you can pay £100 for one brush. Um, I feel like Rifa managed to give us beautiful, great quality brushes for a bit more reasonable price. Uh, I also love Sonia G brushes which are also Japanese and they are natural bristle brushes but they are a bit more expensive. And when it comes to synthetic brushes, I love BK Beauty, they're gorgeous and also Sigma brushes. But I personally use more of the natural bristle brushes. I just prefer it. So again, personal preference. Oh, and the last thing, my favorite wig, I would say, of 2024 is the Raquel Welch Wavy Day, which I'm wearing today. This is in Shaded Biscuit. The only problem, you know, we've had now for a couple of years, I think, a problem with the Shaded Biscuit from Raquel Welch. Um, I've bought another one of those. This one has been sent to me by Mimo Wigs, but then I bought another one from somewhere else because they had like amazing um, promotion um, in Shaded Biscuit and that one is different. It's one of those, do you remember when we, when there was a Shaded Biscuit, there was much darker, the roots were longer, it just didn't look like this Shaded Biscuit and unfortunately I got one like, like it. So um, I'm very scared to buy Shaded Biscuit these days. Sometimes I get the right one, sometimes I don't. So I think if I buy this wig again, I might choose one of the other colors, you know, the really blonde one with dark roots. I can't remember now the name skipped my mind, uh, but there is another really nice color in Raquel Welch for this wig because I feel like you don't know what you're going to get with Shaded Biscuit. I have a feeling that maybe they have two different um, 
factories where they make them and one makes a bit different one than the other I have no idea so this was my favorite wig and I think the other one would be John Renault's Julian Light in Palm Springs Blonde absolutely love that one as well so yeah so that but this is my favorite wig of 2023 so these were my most used products in 2023 please let me know what were your favorites so if i don't have it i can buy it and try it again happy new year i can't wait what 2024 will bring us what favorites we will find in 2024 but for now that's all from me thank you so much for watching and stay fabulous bye